Hey, this is Billy, the permaculture pimp daddy from Perma Pastures Farm, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. Okay, so that brings me to this tank today. So we're going to talk about a major permaculture concept, and really it's a concept all the way around the board, and that's water and water storage. Now, from the very beginning, people are going to say, certain purists out there are probably going to say, well, why didn't you start with water? That's the first thing you do in permaculture. And yeah, in most cases, I would absolutely agree. But in our particular case here, we're first of all in an environment where water generally comes quite easily. Number two, I have a, a spring right here on the property. Number three, I mean, literally, I can throw a rock and hit a stream that's running all year long. So if it ever came down to it, I'd go out there a little house in the prairie style and go fill up a couple of buckets and do what I needed to do. So yes, water is your first priority. In fact, I would make the argument that even before water, I would argue that access is even more important, but you know, let's not split hairs over that. Right now we're gonna talk about water. Now, for those three reasons are the reasons that I didn't make it the highest priority. Even though we get all of our water right now on this property in the form of a well, which just happens to be about 650 feet deep. So it's not like you're going to just stick a bucket down there and get this stuff up. So we did a little bit of playing around and thinking, okay, where in the priority scheme should the water be? Like I said, we got several other sources of water if it came down to it. It's obviously a high priority, especially in these times. Um, but also having the well as deep as it is, has also given me concerns about, you know, in the event of a power outage, what am I going to do? Uh, you know, how are we going to get by? So... That brings me to this baby right here, which by the way, folks, this same tank at one of your big box stores anywhere was a hundred bucks more than what it was when I went to my local farm outlet. You got them everywhere. And not only is it a better, thicker tank, it's like I said, a hundred bucks cheaper. Who can beat that? So check those local places, the mom and pops out there, especially in these times that really need our help. So like I said, we get a bad boy tank so I did the water calculations, I did the rainwater calculator, the whole nine yards, and we're basically on this little barn, it's about a thousand square feet. Um, is this enough tank? Is it too much? No, it's nowhere near enough to handle all the capacity we're going to possibly have in the course of a year. But based on what I intend to do with this thing, whether it's being used in the greenhouse or whether it's used gravity fed downhill, to the things that we need it for, whether it be the animals in the pasture, whether it be the pigs along the way, whether it be the trees in the orchard or the food forest. All those things are going to be handled from this tank right now. Now, in lieu of getting a tank that would have been yay tall, much bigger footprint, I'm just like many things on this property, there's not too many things that are flat. And if you take a kind of a, I don't know if you can tell on here, this thing's canted this way. So I could have gotten a much, much bigger tank, but it would have had a bigger footprint. And that's a problem, at least for us and at least in this area. So use the kind of tank that works well for you. Now, could I have gotten one that was taller, maybe a thousand gallons? Sure. But I, I elected not to go with that because I'm a believer, the old preparedness creed of two is one and one is none. So let's say I had one giant 3,000 gallon tank. So let's just say some bullet came out of nowhere and put a hole in this tank. I got a major problem if it's all the water I have. So instead of doing 1,000 gallon tank, to me it makes so much more sense to have a series of smaller tanks that if for any reason, let's say a manufacturer's defect, no matter the case, I can take it, pull it out of circulation, repair it, do what I have to do, if I even need to move it, and then use the other one. But the first things first, we now have this thing roughly below where the downspout is going to be. We're not going to do anything fancy. We're not going to have any first flush diverters or anything like that. We're just going to get water in this tank. This will serve a purpose in the near future. Right now it'll be an overflow valve, but essentially out of the bottom of this thing is where we're going to feed everything else. Now in the future, I will have a DC pump. Um, it'll be battery fed the whole nine yards. And I will also, in time, hook it into the main water going into the house. That's a whole nother video unto itself. But for right now, first thing we're going to do is get a pad leveled up for this thing. 
We're gonna put some rocks down here and we're gonna get hopping and popping. All right, so we're at the point now where I didn't film it, so just take my word for it. You'll see the blue chat, and then above it, you'll see this crushed uh, brick. It's the only thing left out there. I mean, I don't know what's going on right now, but no, you can't get like yard tools for some reason, and you can't find any, any of the rock that I typically use. Um, so I ended up going with this stuff here, this... Um, crushed up brick it seems to be doing the same exact thing it's not exactly what i wanted so just to kind of recap we tamp the base put down the rocks or put down some sand put down some rocks and it's about eight inches high and now it, that was pretty well leveled when i put the uh, tank back down on it now we got the tank pushed back up we we'll put down a layer of sand level it back up and that's a wrap. So with that said, we'll move on to the next phase. All right, so this bad boy is sitting on the base. Now remember, just for GP, when you put your level on it, I mean, this is a rounded top on this thing. So you wanna take the lid off and do one of these numbers, you know? So anyway, with that said, this thing is about as level as I can hope it to ever be. And here we are to the next step. What wasn't necessarily hard to find was the guttering and stuff that I already have. Now, if you look up here, a while back, Michelle and I had, um, we tore down the old guttering that was already falling apart anyway through half of this, on the back side of this barn. Um, that guttering was already falling down and what was up there just wasn't worth rebuilding or redoing. So we just ripped it all down and I think we got about 40 feet up there, maybe a little bit more than that. And we got a single downspout coming down. Now what's gonna happen, we just kind of talk you through it. And let me put the lid on this thing because the echo coming out of there is freaking me out. Sounds like somebody's hiding down in there. Anyway, like I said before, we're not going to worry about first flush diverters or anything like that. It's going to offset back to the barn. So I got some means to secure it. And then we're going to offset right back into the tank. And then, of course, it's going to have some, I think in this particular case, it's just going to have some sort of netting or filter we're gonna do it, I think, in a way that William described that they had done it in Australia. This will be the overflow, and down low will be where the valve is that we do everything we need. So with that said, it's time to get cracking on this. All right, so this part's done and it's pretty stable for the most part. Now we're gonna take this hardware cloth and kind of set the lid off to the side. Now this isn't a permanent solution. We're gonna take this hardware cloth and kind of mold it down in here to some extent. And then we're gonna extend the snout here, the downspout into that where it's just gonna go in just for a little bit. Now this is just a temporary solution for now. In time, I'll make something of a little channel, more of a funnel. I'll bend some metal or something to kind of create something of a funnel with the hardware cloth in it. And that's gonna catch what little debris comes off of here. Worst case scenario, Michelle's probably the only one small enough that can actually fit down in here. So we'll have her down in there and jump out <laughs> like she's coming out of a cake or something. Anyway, that's the next step. So we're gonna put this on here, extend our downspout, and that's a wrap for now, notwithstanding um, the overflow, which is only gonna take a matter of minutes, and then the um, little spout we're gonna put down here at the end. But here we are, moving right along. All right, folks, that's a wrap. And there's really nothing to it. Um, big thing is make sure your base is level, especially if you have a taller, high-profile tank, 
because the taller you get and the more out of level it is, the bigger problem it's going to be. This is pretty darn close to about as level as you can get. Like I said, there's really not a whole lot to it. You can get your tank somewhere down at a, you know, at a mom and pop farm store. That's what I would always recommend. But really the parts and pieces, you can get some of this stuff. There was a construction site not long ago where they were really just throwing some of this stuff out. You can adapt it to make that work too. And this stuff is easy. If you need help, go to the hardware store. That's what they're there for. They'll help you out. So until next time, this is Billy, the permaculture pimp daddy from Permapastures Farm, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. Because it is. We'll see you next time.